Thank you so much for joining uh, this workshop. My name is Shinsuke Agehara, and I'm a plant physiologist at Gulf Coast Research and Education Center. So I'm going to be the first speaker uh, in the nutrient management topic. And uh, so I'm going to be talking about basics. Uh, and then uh, the next speaker will be Dr. Zotarera, and he's going to be talking about uh, more specific uh, information, uh, nitrogen recommendation, and some updates based on his uh, research. So I'm going to cover four items today, starting from soil testing, uh, fertilizer recommendation, nutrient deficiency diagnosis, and tissue analysis. Uh, they are all important for soil nutrient management. And uh, so soil testing. So uh, when you send the soil to a commercial lab or a, a UF soil testing lab, uh, you receive this type of soil report. And the amount of information you get uh, will depend on what you request, uh, of course. But uh, if you request standard complete test, then uh, you will have soil pH, micronutrients, micronutrients, and soil CC. So soil pH is here. Micronutrients are normally listed on the top, then micronutrients, and then the CC is here in this corner, in this case. And there are some optional tests, and one is organic matter, inorganic nitrogen, and soil texture. Organic matter, inorganic nitrogen, and uh, soil texture. So starting from soil pH, so 6.5 is the target soil pH for brassicas, and the brassicas are considered as only slightly tolerant to uh, acidic soil. So they don't like uh, too, uh, too much acidity. But the reason why brassica prefers 6.5 is because when the pH is too low, you can see that this is the, the, the chart showing availability of different nutrients and micronutrient, the availability becomes limited. And when the pH goes high, then availability of micronutrient becomes limited. So uh, normally 6 to 7 is, is the hardest part, and 6.5 is right in the middle. So, so Braska is safe to be, uh, you know, if you can get 6.5, that's, that's very good. And soil pH is so important uh, because it determines the availability of nutrients. So this is something you have to look at uh, before you start to uh, adjust uh, other soil variables. Micronutrients. And this is the uh, interpretation by IFAS uh, for vegetable crop. And uh, uh, it's pretty universal across different vegetable crops. But one thing I want to note is that Interpretations of soil test results, uh, macronutrients, micronutrients, uh, they are different from university to university, or uh, there is difference between universities and the commercial labs. Okay. But uh, here is the interpretation that I first developed. Uh, and for phosphorus, uh, we consider when the soil test result is less than 25 ppm, it's considered low. Between 626 to 45, that's medium, and higher than 45, uh, it does going to be considered high. And then the potassium, magnesium, calcium, and so on. And uh, so uh, I think uh, this is, uh, 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 I think, relatively accurate, uh, except for uh, phosphorus. So phosphorus is a very tricky nutrient uh, because that the extraction of phosphorus uh, uh, depending on the soil test and uh, it's very difficult to find the optimum soil test. So recently we found that uh, this interpretation uh, uh, might not be uh, accurate enough uh, for Florida soil. So there is a project going on uh, to de evaluate this interpretation and also the soil test itself. So, so this interpretation, especially for phosphorus, may change in the future. And uh, we are working on that. 
and uh, I hope uh, we can provide more accurate uh, interpretation uh, in the near future. And all this information can be found from the link here. Micronutrients. And uh, the micronutrients uh, interpretation will depend on the soil pH. And here is the soil pH, and uh, this is the list of micronutrient and uh, interpretation and uh, deficient toxic or deficient. So what this means is that uh, in case of copper, when soil pH is uh, between 5.5 to 5.9, if the soil test shows below 0.1 ppm, then that will be considered deficient. Then we will have to uh, apply additional amount of copper. And the soil CEC, uh, CEC is a uh, cation exchange capacity. And the cation exchange capacity uh, is pretty much uh, the indicator of nutrient uh, holding capacity. So higher, the better. And here is the interpretation. And when CEC less than 10, then we consider it's low. And that's typical for sandy soil. If it's 10 to 20, then uh, we can consider it's medium. More than 20 is high. So the reason why uh, our soil do not have a high CEC uh, is because CEC really depends on the amount of clay and organic matter because they are the one that hold uh, uh, positive charges. Like, I'm sorry, uh, they are the ones that hold negative charges so they can attract the positive charge ions such as potassium, calcium, magnesium, and so on. And optional soil test, uh, organic method. And uh, uh, you can uh, include organic method in the soil test uh, if, uh, if you are using organic material in your fertilization program, such as compost. If you are not, you know, you don't expect that the organic matter will change at all. So uh, you don't really have to uh, test organic matter. And uh, organic matter in Florida soil typically is pretty low anyway. But if you want to, uh, if you are working on, you know, improving the soil health by implementing organic practices, then organic matter is for sure uh, a good soil variable to test. In organic nitrogen, and uh, we typically don't have to test it uh, before planting because uh, because of the heavy rain, uh, our soil do not uh, have uh, high enough uh, inorganic nitrogen. Uh, so we pretty much consider that the soil do not have uh, inorganic nitrogen uh, at the beginning of the growing season. And uh, when I test inorganic nitrogen at the beginning of the season, it's uh, most of the time pretty low. So it's really not necessary, but you can test it at the end of the season if you want to evaluate your nitrogen program. And if you find really a high level of nitrogen, inorganic nitrogen, at the end of the season after harvest, that means the soil still has a lot of nitrogen that your crop wasn't able to use. So that might indicate that uh, you are over applying nitrogen. So, so if you are testing nitrogen, uh, testing at the end uh, will give you more use, useful information. And the soil texture, this will not change over time. So if you know your soil, then uh, you don't have to test it. But you know, if you're curious, uh, if you haven't done this test, you can include this test. And uh, our fertilizer recommendation. So for uh, brassicas, uh, nitrogen recommendation by IFAS is 175 pounds per acre. And the phosphorus and potassium, they will depend on the soil test result. If the soil uh, P is considered low, uh, then you can apply up to 120, 150 pounds. Uh, if the soil P is considered medium, then you can apply up to 100 pounds. If the soil P is considered high, then we don't recommend any phosphorus. And the potassium, uh, some, uh, something very similar. Again, this might also change in the future because we are re-evaluating the accuracy of a soil test for phosphorus and the, the accuracy of the interpretation. So uh, uh, this, this might change uh, in the near future. 
uh, micronutrients. This is the general recommendation uh, when soil test results are at deficient level based on the table in the previous slide. Uh, you can apply, you know, uh, these amounts or uh, different micronutrients. Next one, nutrient deficiency diagnosis. So, uh, you know, it, it's always the best if you sample the tissue and, you know, test it uh, by a commercial lab or a UF lab, but you can also do uh, visual diagnosis by yourself as well. And here is kind of a general rule. Uh, the nutrient deficiency, uh, depending on the nutrient, the symptoms are different and the location where symptoms appear uh, will be different. So uh, you can kind of follow this chart and then you can have uh, some you know, ideas uh, what the deficiency uh, may be. Uh, for example, if you find the symptom only on new leaves, then uh, you follow here. And if it's necrosis on growing tip, uh, what intravenous chlorosis? If it's necrosis on growing tip, and it comes here, and then incomplete flower and uh, fruit formation or deformed leaf development, uh, tip burn and curling. And if it's this, if, if if this is a symptom that you are finding, and it's most likely calcium deficiency, something like that. So uh, I, I know this presentation is recorded, so. You know, if you if you like to uh, practice uh, doing the visual diagnosis, then uh, you can use this information. Okay, uh, the last item is tissue analysis, and I just wanted to uh, discuss uh, important tips for tissue sampling. So uh, first, nutrient deficiency symptoms can be induced not only by insufficient uh, fertilization but also by uh, nematodes, stress, insect disease, and unfavorable weather conditions. So just because you're finding, uh, you know, for example, uh, yellow leaves, it might not mean, you know, nutrient deficiency, nitrogen deficiency, uh, or you might see it, it could be nutrient deficiency, but the main cause is not uh, because you didn't apply enough nitrogen. It could be because of the nematode damage that the roots cannot uh, uptake nitrogen. So, uh, you know, uh, you, you can do uh, tissue tests to find out uh, what's going on, but uh, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't tell you everything. Uh, when there are only a few random plants showing nutrient deficiency symptoms, the problem is likely not associated with your uh, fertilization program. So, you know, if you if you see the program is patchy, then uh, and then especially if you uh, uh, if you think that there is no problem with your uh, uh, fertilizer application or uh, drip injection system, then uh, uh, you know that the chance that is that the problem is due to fertilization program is, is uh, pretty low. Micronutrient deficiency can most easily be detected in uh, all the leaves. And so, you know, uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can follow the chart that I showed you in the previous slide and then uh, uh, do visual diagnosis. Micronutrient deficiency can mostly uh, easily detected in younger leaves. Uh, choose the leaf to sample depending on the deficiency symptoms. So, uh, for example, uh, when nutrient deficiency symptoms are consistent uh, across the field, uh, correct uh, leaf samples from both nutrient deficient and healthy plants, and ideally same age of leaves. The healthy leaf uh, sample can be used as a reference. So it's always good, and you know, because that the nutrient level will change over time and the optimum nutrient range uh, uh, is based on a, a growth stage. So, you know, if you want to uh, know uh, how severe the problem in terms of nutrient, it's always good to have a reference sample uh, taken at the same time from the same field and uh, compare. And then uh, that way, uh, it 
uh, it will make a lot easier to find out the problem. And tissue analysis is a supplement of plant diagnosis tool, and it does not always identify the problems. So use uh, tissue analysis in combination with visual evaluation of overall plant growth. So uh, tissue analysis data uh, are very useful, but uh, again, they, they don't tell you whole thing. So I still, uh, you know, go out to the field and then uh, use, for example, plant overall plant size and uh, greenness of the leaves, and they give us uh, a lot of good information too. So I try to use different tools, and uh, then you can make a better judgment uh, because sometimes a plant try to adapt to different environmental conditions. And uh, even when plants are not receiving enough nutrients, for example, they might try to slow down the growth. And that way, uh, nutrient tissue concentration might not show deficiency, but uh, the growth is stunted. So in this case, uh, tissue analysis will not give you uh, reliable information. And so you really have to look at uh, multiple aspects and then understand that the tissue analysis is just one of the tools. And then uh, again, you know, before using tissue analysis, uh, uh, the step one is always the soil test. So do the soil test and starting from soil pH and then uh, make sure that, uh, you know, uh, at the preplant, uh, you applied a sufficient amount of uh, fertilizer. Then you can do uh, tissue analysis during the growing season just to make sure uh, your fertilization program uh, uh, is adequate. And then you can consider, uh, if needed, uh, uh, a body application of uh, uh, additional fertilizers. Okay, I think that's, uh, that's it for my presentation. So if you have any questions, uh, here's my number.